Join us now as Senator Tammy Baldwin. Senator, Senator, what are you hearing as you head back to D.C. this week? Are there any chances for compromise on gun reform? Well, certainly from my constituents as I travel throughout the state uh, during this uh, past recess that we've just had, um, this is really high on their minds. And they believe that Congress has a moral responsibility to take action on this, um, on this topic, especially in the light of just the uh, number of, of deaths and mass shootings uh, uh, you know, that have happened during our recess. And so I think there's very little division, even partisan division, within our state on the, prem on the idea of expanding background checks. Uh, people believe that every sale, every exchange ought to be covered by a background check. And estimates are that probably 25 to 40 percent of all uh, gun sales don't have a, a background check associated with it. So, uh, you know, why I'm hearing from Wisconsinites that we must act. As I head back to Washington, D.C., there's been some glimmers of hope, but there's also been some uh, disappointing news. Um, glimmers of hope when uh, the president at first said he was open to a discussion of expanding background checks. He's since flipped on that. Um, Mitch McConnell said this issue would be up front and center. Now he's saying he wouldn't put anything on the floor that wouldn't get the president's signature. Well, I say Congress doesn't wait for the president. We need to forge ahead. And I feel that um, uh, expansion of background checks is where we need to start. Now, the president sent in a tweet this week that he's urging Congress to get back to work, but yes. in that tweet had nothing to do with gun reform. Instead, he was looking at uh, prescription drug prices, health care, infrastructure. Is this a good sign that maybe it's going to be another year where Congress doesn't act? You know, I, I think there's been a lot more momentum and discussion, um, especially since my colleagues and myself have been home hearing from our constituents. Um, you know, students went back to school uh, in many parts of the state this week. And uh, when you have uh, parents worrying about uh, leaving their children at, at school, um, the drills they have to go through about mass shootings. Um, this is just not acceptable for Congress to do nothing. And so uh, we've all got to push, and I'm calling on uh, Senator Mitch McConnell to schedule a floor vote and debate on a comprehensive background check uh, piece of legislation. You know, the House of Representatives passed something um, uh, in February of this year. It's six months later. We don't have to reinvent the wheel. Let's just pass what the House sent us. Now, there's not so much talk anymore about red flag laws in Congress, but it's been a big topic here mm -hmm. in Wisconsin. Where do you stand on red flag laws? You know, I do think that um, it, in the many instances we've heard of where um, an individual is showing all sorts of signs of, um, uh, you know, threatening violence, whether that's online or showing that um, they are a danger to themselves or others, um, loved ones, family members, friends should be able to do something. And right now we don't really have much that they can do. Um, they can call the police, but that really doesn't necessarily help create some sort of intervention. And so uh, having um, instances of, you know, extreme behavior, be able to, uh, at least for a pause, say that that person cannot purchase um, a firearm, I think is important, and it's something that I would support. Now, a lot of people from Wisconsin, being from Wisconsin, a lot of people hunt, a lot of people already have guns in their homes. Do you think gun reforms would make a difference, even though there's a lot of guns already out there? And some colleagues of yours on the Republican side are doubtful it would prevent a mass shooting. Well, let's start with that latter point that in West Texas, the most recent act of mass violence where seven people uh, perished and 22 uh, at least were injured, um, that individual uh, had sought to purchase a gun in 2014 and uh, he was prevented from doing so because there was uh, something that came up in his background check. Then he went and purchased uh, an AR-style assault weapon in a 
private sale that wasn't covered by a background check. So that's one most recent example where this could have made a difference. On the earlier point, um, you know, I'm a gun owner. I believe that law-abiding citizens should be able to uh, purchase and possess guns. Um, I have no issue with the background check, and neither does the Second Amendment. Background checks have been around for a long time. We're just talking about expanding it to all sales rather than um, a, a, just a percentage of those sales. And I think that makes common sense, and I don't think any um, gun owner should have any concerns about that. If they're law-abiding, this is not any sort of violation or curtailment of the Second Amendment. All right, Senator, we'll be right back in a little bit.